Welcome back everybody. In this video, we're going to pick up where we left off in the previous video, where we had deployed a new Linux VM, which is VM VM3-Linux. What I'm gonna go ahead and do actually on this guy is we're gonna go ahead and power him down and I'm going to create a clone of this particular virtual machine. As you can see that it's it's got an IP address and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to clone him and I'm gonna create a couple more instances of him. I'm also gonna go ahead and get rid of VM1-Linux. So we're gonna go ahead and power and then power off because we're running into a problem with its connectivity. So if you do run into problems with the VM, you can obviously delete it if you need to. So to delete the VM, we're just gonna right click here and go delete from disk. Makes it pretty simple. Yes, we're gonna delete. And then VM2-Windows, it's got a small problem here with its connectivity. It's getting a, uh, an APIPA address, which it should not be getting. So not exactly sure why that's having a problem, but uh, I can actually go over here to launch web console and see if we can't fix this guy real quick. And we're going to come in here and just do an IP config. And okay, so he doesn't get an IP address. I can do a forward slash renew and see if we can't force an IP address. He should get one from DHCP. And all that good stuff. So let's just go back over here to this guy, make sure that he's connected. We may have to reboot the VM. Sometimes that happens. So we'll go ahead and obviously that's not taking care of the job. So I'm gonna go ahead and control C this process. I'm gonna go ahead and go over here to the power button and we're gonna go ahead and restart it. We're just gonna go ahead and kick that off. So what I'm gonna do back on here is I am going to take vm3-linux I'm going to go and power off because we have VMware tools, VMware tools will reach in and do it so we're going to go ahead and power off the virtual machine oh I meant to power yeah power off vm3 so on this guy we're going to I'm going to right click on the VM and I'm going to T say clone and from here you can do a template you can convert to template if you want to which is one way to do it now that the VM is powered off right now that the VM is powered off we can actually convert to template and I'm gonna go ahead and convert to template and what a template is is it's a copy of the a, the virtual machine the way that it is and the cool thing about that is is once you've converted a virtual machine to a template you can then take that, ver that template and then deploy more virtual machines from it. So you don't have to go out and create a new virtual machine every time you want to do something. So if you have built a golden image of different VMs that you need to deploy in your environment, great. Go absolutely 100% run with that. And then just take the, the images that are good to go, convert them to a template in order to do their operation. So I'm going to go ahead and say... Yes, we're going to go ahead and convert this guy to a template. And now you'll notice it goes away, right? I'm going to come over here to the VMs and templates tab. And guess what? Now we have VM3-Linux. So I'm actually going to click on this guy. And I'm going to rename it. Right-click, rename to be our VM. I'm going to VM-Linux-Template. Something very, very obvious, right? Click on OK. Now what I get to go do is I get to right click on this guy and I get to new virtual machine from this template. So new virtual machine from this template is as it says. I can go ahead and deploy a new VM from it. I have convert to virtual machine. Well, Rob, didn't you just convert the virtual machine to a template? I did. But if I need to go and do something to the template, maybe I need to install Windows updates, maybe I need to add some software or install a patch, do some updating of some type. Well, guess what? I get to go ahead and I can, because you can't edit a template. A template cannot be edited once it's in template format. I can go ahead and take that template, convert it back to a virtual machine, interact with it, 
and then once it's been updated, convert it back to a template. So I'm actually going to go ahead and new temple from this VM. I'm going to go ahead and call this guy the uh, Linux one, Linux dash one, and I'm going to click on next, and it's going to ask me to select a resource because we don't have any really cool advanced features to roll out. We haven't deployed a cluster. We don't have DRS running yet. We're still doing some of the basic stuff with inside of VMware. I am going to choose vert host two and click on next. The storage that we're going to use is it should grab the same as source, meaning that it should automatically choose SAN, which it does. Now, if we wanted to adjust the storage policy, we could. We haven't talked about any storage policy or we're there for to a storage based policy management for vSAN or vVolumes or anything like that. We haven't done any of those details. So I'm going to select SAN and we're going to go ahead and click on next. And what are the clone options? We have customize the operating system, customize the virtual machine's hardware, or power on virtual machine after creation. If we want to modify something, we can go and modify the customization specification manager, which means we can make modifications to the OS. We can make modifications to the hardware. So I'm going to go ahead and click on both of these so that we can customize the virtual machine's hardware and then power on the virtual machine um, actually, let's do this one out of the gate. Let's just customize this. So if we uncheck this box, notice on the left-hand side how cus customized hardware goes away. And if we click on Customize the Operating System, we're going to go ahead and click on Next. And what do you want to do with the, the operating system? Well, we really don't need to do anything here. You know, there's nothing here for us to really modify, but if there was, you could do that. Now, on the hardware, we can modify the hardware somehow. We can give it more of something. I'm actually going to set this to be client device and uncheck it. And I'm going to modify this and say, this guy's only going to have an eight gig hard drive. And if I expand this out, make sure that it is, and you notice that we have no way of modifying this. So right now we have not been thin provisioning any of our virtual machines. So we're actually taking up the entire disk space. So that's something that we could think take into consideration and so it's eight gigabytes so it says enter disk capacity which is larger than its original capacity so we can't modify it's it's we can't lower the size of the disk so if we wanted to we could add in some storage IO control in this area we'll talk about that more later on if I wanted to add some more memory to it I can give it two gigs of RAM and that'll work, but I can't take away from what it's already got. I'm gonna go ahead and click on next, and then finish. So now it's gonna go ahead and create a virtual machine from the template. As you can see, it's gonna take a couple of minutes to do that, and then once it does, we'll be able to go through and launch it. Now, what's cool about this is, if I made a mistake in the original deployment of the VM, maybe I should not have used thin, uh, thick provisioning, lazy zeroed. Maybe I should have used thin provisioning. Well, guess what? I can blow away the VM, rebuild it using thin provisioning, and then convert to a template at a later point in time. So this is going to take a little bit of time because it's got to actually make the drive and all of that stuff. So I'm going to pause while this is doing its job. And then once it's done, I'll bring you guys back in and we can continue taking a look at this. All right, our VM finally loaded. It took a quite a bit of time for it to actually push, but uh, it's finally good to go. So we come in and take a look at it. We can see that if we expand the hardware. The uh, It's got the two gigs of RAM and all that good stuff. So we're going to go ahead and power it on and it should be deployed to verthost2.lab.local. So we're going to go ahead and let it do its thing. I'm going to actually go ahead and close out this tab and this tab. And while that's powering on, I'm going to click back over here to VM2 and launch the web console and see if that makes a difference with the, the PC. So we'll send control delete and log into this bad boy. All right, so I'm going to come back over here. 
we're not going to have internet connectivity here in, uh, for just a moment. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the IP config. And I'm going to right click on here, Open Network and Sharing Center, go to Ethernet Zero, Properties, and IPv4 and see what we've got configured. So it should grab an IP address dynamically, but for whatever reason, it is not. So there's that. So on Linux VM1, we're going to go ahead and launch Web Console. Web Console is selected, so it should go ahead and launch Linux 1. And there it is. We're going to go ahead and log into the PC. Just like that. And all right. So if we click up here on the network connection and we go to connection information, this is a good sign. We can see that we got an IP address of 10.1.3.132, which is what we want to have. So we're good to go there. So back on VM2, I can go ahead and click on this guy and properties. Since he's not getting a DHCP address, I'm going to just hard code his address. And I'll put in here 10.1, whoops, 10.1.3. And I'll put in here dot .254 slash 24 mask. And 10.1.3.1 is our gateway. DNS server will, we're just going to leave blank. Click on close, click close, come over here, hit the up arrow, and that's good to go. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to ping 10.1.3.132 and see if we can't get connectivity between the devices. So it is not pinging this guy. So if I come over here, right click on the desktop would go to terminal. If I do an if config 10.1.3.132, let's go ahead and ping 10.1.3.254. And it's trying to ping it, but it's not going to work. So in this particular case, if we go back over here to this deployment, and this could be one of two problems. This could be the fact that the, the networking component tree is not working on Windows or we can click on the distributed port group and we're going to go to actions and then edit settings for the data port group we're going to go to security and promiscuous mode is set to reject which means that any communication with inside of the port group will be denied I'm going to go ahead and set that to accept click on OK that reconfigures it and then if I go back to Linux 1, it doesn't seem like it's helping. So let's go back over here. Let's move this out of the way. Go back to VM2, hit the up arrow. And I think there's some legitimate problems with this particular device. It's, it's just not working. Let's go back over here to the windows here and just make sure that ah okay so part of the problem I didn't notice this before if we click on here we can so actually hold on let me come down to this guy Linux dash one if we look at well before it was showing disconnected so if we look on here it's saying connected let's go to actions and it's got the correct it's got the IP address that we set on it we're gonna go to edit settings and we're just going to make sure that data is chosen, which it is. So it should be working theoretically between the devices, but for whatever reason, it is not. So we have no network connectivity between the devices. So at this point, I'm really not sure why it's giving me a hard time, but it is. So needless to say, that's not really the uh, that's not the focus of this video. The focus of the video was to focus on converting a VM to a template and then deploy a VM from the template and we have been able to accomplish that goal so that's pretty much the way we have it laid out so far so with that being said I want to thank everybody for hanging out with me in this video and until next time guys take it easy